Welcome to all you need to know before imaging this or that. In this quick video, we're going to show you some tips and tricks for how to get the best possible image for this target. Let's, Let's go. go. You're going to find the great Hercules globular cluster in the constellation of... Hercules! Duh. <laughs> it is a bit more than 22,000 light years away, uh, so pretty far. And it's really close to other bright objects like M92, which is another globular cluster, as well as not too far from M57, so the Ring Nebula. And it is best imaged in the summer. So uh, M13 has a magnitude of... Well, that means it's pretty bright and pretty large. Um, you can see it with your naked eye if you're far away from the city. Uh, and you can also use it, you can use a pair of binoculars to see it too, which is very cool. Um, thanks to its size, you can um, image it with a large telescope, but you can also do it with the tiny, you know, telescope like our 70 millimeter refractor. By the way, we imaged M13 from start to finish for the Galactic Core Season 1, so you should totally join. <laughs> and so here is M13 taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. And as you can see, there are plenty of stars. Actually, there are exactly, well, almost to be exact, 500,000 stars. They're mostly white, yellow, and there are some blue ones too. Either way, it's beautiful. Pretty much like every globular cluster out there, uh, this is a great broadband target. So you can grab your unmodified DSLR camera or your one-shot color camera and just like go to town. Shoot away. <laughs> yeah. So we suggest taking 30 second to one minute exposures and spending at least two hours on it. So yes, you will want to keep your exposure short. So like she said, 30 seconds is great. Maybe one minute because uh, of how messy uh, the cluster is already. There are so many stars in there. So imagine if you have some wind or your your guiding is not really good. It's too uh, it's, much. It's going to be a huge mess. Just picture like 500,000 stars with a bit of trail. Uh, you know, and the core is already so populated, so... You it really, sounds like a headache already. Yeah, you want your guiding to be perfect or maybe don't even guide at all. Uh, if your tracking is good, uh, maybe guiding will make it worse. So, uh, but yeah, aim for short exposures if you want to keep your, your cluster really neat. Also, on that note, um, if when you go through your frames, you see you know, some very clear images and some not so good, like for example, if there is like three or four that are a bit blurry from a wind or something, don't stack those, just delete them, it's fine. Don't feel bad about deleting those because in the end, it's better to have less frames but they're all crisp than having a bunch of frames with like a few bad ones. So uh, just keep the best of the best when you're looking through your frames. Good advice. Thank you. <laughs> Here's a single shot from our small setup in a Bortle 4 zone with a DSLR camera. If you're in a very light polluted area, it's best to just get as much data as possible just so you can get rid of all of that noise. And here is the final image so with a, from the same setup uh, actually taken with the galactic course. So this is uh, the final result which is just about two hours, uh, I think one hour and 45 minutes. And as you can see, it looks great. And it was without this LR camera and a small telescope, so uh, that was a very easy setup. And here is a very similar picture, but this time taken with our 8-inch reflector telescope and a cooled camera. So the reflector has a longer focal length and is faster at f3.9 instead of f5, uh, like the refractor, which is why the second image is so much better. It's more impressive for sure, yeah. yeah. Um, and this camera is also more sensitive. Do you have a fun fact of M about M13? To end this video? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can end with a fun fact. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, here's one that I think everyone always has heard uh, in the past because this is probably the, the most famous fun, fun fact about any messy object. But uh, M13 was uh, targeted in the year uh, 1974, so November 1974. Uh, scientists decided to send a, a message towards M13. So that's because there are so many stars there and likely so many planets with beings. So this message was sent, I believe, in 74, uh, but it will take like what 25,000 years to reach the target. So uh, will be long gone. And also, by the way, it's going to take 25,000 years more to, come back. to receive a message, I mean, an answer if we do get an answer back. So 
um, keep telling this fun fact to your kids and grandkids and to the generations and then maybe one day your uh, your grand 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 uh, kids will be able to receive the message and uh, make contact. <laughs> In the meantime, point your camera at M13 and get some good shots. <laughs> We hope this video helped you get to know this target just a little bit better and helped to prepare you to image it. We would love to see your image, so go on our website and find this object on our gallery and attach your image to the comment section. We would love to see it. And by the way, online we have a bunch more tips for so many, so many objects. So go on there and check it out. So we'll catch you guys next time in Clear Skies. Clear skies.